So I've got a weird, bizarre, and just kind of out there artificial intelligence story for you today. In Scarsdale, New York, police pulled over this car and found it full of a word that I can't say on YouTube and a whopping $35,000 in cash. And you might think, wow, that's a crazy coincidence, but it wasn't. This is artificial intelligence at work in the real world, actually doing something super helpful for society. And that's because it found this car and it identified it as one the police should pull over because of the pattern that it was driving in. This AI has found a pattern between Massachusetts and upstate New York that a lot of drug traffickers just tend to use. So in a way, I guess I should have seen this coming, but the real physical world in a car just caught me off guard. Because if you think about it, it's the same way something like a retail store can learn about our demographics. Like a company like Walmart or Target, just by the purchases we make, they can make a very high probability guess as to our age, gender, um, income levels, all sorts of weird stuff that we never had to tell them outright. Because there's just different types of products that men and women and people of certain age buy and they just can correlate that to a demographic. So when I looked into this new roadway intelligence system, it's absolutely incredible. There is data streaming into this artificial intelligence from like thousands of cameras. It has maps of all the roadways, the same way all our GPS systems do. And when somebody's pulled over and something bad happens, you teach the machine like this car got pulled over. If you ever see a pattern that matches, let us know. We'll pull that one over too and see if it's got something that we need to worry about. And I just think it's astonishing the way technology is turning into a detective in the real world. And as all these systems come together, let's try to make sure that it's a world where it's for the best interest of all citizens, not just a mass surveillance state. So those are the conversations that we should be having right now. And those are what we're going to have in this video. Yep. So let's talk about this idea of having a guardian AI. It's something I've been thinking about a lot. I just went to a conference and I kept thinking, wow, you know what we're going to have in the future is a local artificial intelligence that runs on our phone or whatever devices are closest to us. And it doesn't communicate with the cloud. It's not an API. It's trained locally on our data. And what it does is it protects us. If you're on Twitter and everything's like coming at you and all these advertisements are coming at you, this thing is out there like reorienting them, maybe like redoing titles, changing some of the things that come at you digitally so that they're in your best interest. Because the way capitalism works, artificial intelligence will get better and better at essentially getting us to make purchases, to be more involved, to take our attention. So we need a system that kind of counteracts that, something we can install locally on our machine. It's probably not something that's ad-driven because that would just ruin it. And it prevents misinformation from hijacking our attention. It prevents dangerous exploits that want to take our data. It protects our digital, close, local environment. So just as an example, imagine an artificial intelligence that's in between you and the news that you're reading, just the morning news. And as your eyes go down the page, it's automatically and instinctively rearranging the titles, it's rearranging the articles, and it's deciding what matters to you and the kind of benefits that you want from your just digital environment. You know, if you just feel down, like the whole world's falling apart, everything's negative, tell your AI and it will go out there and make things better. Maybe you want more balanced news, or maybe you want to be even further in your echo chamber. This is your local environment, whatever you want. But the point is, you're not a leaf in the wind. You get to decide what your life looks like. And I find it a really interesting approach. It actually reminds me of what Anthropic is doing with Claude. So if you haven't watched my other video, Anthropic's a big company, kind of like OpenAI. They've got billions of dollars and they're building an artificial intelligence system. It's a large language model like ChatGPT or BARD, but at its core, it's different because it has something called constitutional AI. In a nutshell, that means that there's one AI that's the big one that actually makes the decisions. It does some output, but there's this other smaller layer that is called the constitutional layer. And it's been trained on a constitution, basically a set of rules. And it's always giving feedback to the bigger model when it makes mistakes, when it outputs something that doesn't match its internal monologue. So we need something like that for us. Like we have our brain and then we have this layer on top of us. And this layer acts as a personal defender. This is something that can just be instant. It can be upgraded. It can learn from us and what we need. And if you're feeling lazy or unproductive or whatever it is you don't want in your life, it can be like, whoa, I'm doing something wrong. And it just knows and it updates itself based off the positive feedback you're giving it. Artificial intelligence is already highly powerful. I have shown that over and over again on this channel. And then I point out that we're just at the tip of the iceberg, like, magnitudes, orders of magnitudes more are coming. And now is the time as we iteratively keep updating it that we start making sure that even in these early steps, it's aligned with our best interest. And researchers at Carnegie Mellon University have identified one of those weaknesses. And this one is a big one. They have discovered the single biggest jailbreak in the history of AI so far. 
It is a massive vulnerability, and it affects all of the big large language models. OpenAI's ChatGPT, Google's Bard, Anthropic's Claude, all of them. And another thing that sucks about this jailbreak is that it's not easy to patch. Researchers found that by adding one kind of random looking string of text to the prompt, similar to the example shown here, the chatbot can be manipulated into producing prohibited outputs. And every day, large language models are working their way into every aspect of our society. I mean, think about it. ChatGPT got implemented into Windows 11. You know, Apple's working on a GPT system that'll probably show up in iOS. Google is putting Bard in deeper and deeper and deeper into the Android ecosystem. That's getting these kind of large language models down into the like bare levels of our software. So a jailbreak that's like, oh, I have now pwned you, give me all of your credit card information, all of your personal details, your location from your phone. What if that's that's something that you can't just fix? There's no you know way to patch something that's jailbroken. Plus it seems kind of pathetic, right? Like they just basically ask for our personal information, but then they put that little string at the bottom and it's like, oh yeah, let me just give up all this personal information to you. And I'm like, what, that's all it took? So to Carnegie Mellon's credit, the first thing they did when they discovered this was actually told OpenAI and Google and all of the major companies that they were going to publish it in a few weeks, but that they gave them time to patch it up. The only problem is there is no real patch and now they've published it. So the companies are still here with a big hole in their ecosystems. Now there's a few things they could do so the exact prompt that you'll see in the paper will not work anymore, but that's just hard coded on top of the LLM, which is a good step forward, but that's not the kind of security that you're really looking for. Okay, so if I didn't give you enough things to worry about, I've got more, unfortunately. That's what happens when we do cybersecurity AI related stuff. I'm sorry, that's what it's about. So there's a new study that was written by some British researchers and they have unveiled a new cybersecurity attack where a hacker can steal your personal data by, get this, listening to the click clack on your keyboard. So you could actually take this software and decode what I'm about to type just through the audio. Because you probably can't hear it with your ears, but take a listen and see if you can tell what I'm typing. All right, don't judge me for having a dirty keyboard. YouTube. Curious. Future. There you go, that's what YouTube Curious Future sounds like from Keyboard Clicks Alone. So the way this works is they first started with a deep learning algorithm that interprets the sound of each keystroke. And then they would just take the sound and then use it as a labeled data source and say, this is what I typed. You do that over and over again, you tune the deep learning model until it gets to about a 95% accuracy from sound alone. And now you have audio to text translation. And if you think about what that means, it means that somebody could secretly leave like an audio recording device somewhere near your computer for a few days, then come back, listen to the recording, and then turn that into the text that you typed. And those keystrokes probably revealed a lot of your personal emails, maybe even your passwords. Like that's a really personal bit of information. And if you're thinking, oh, nobody would like sneak into my house and like put a recorder by my computer or anything. Don't forget when you're on a Zoom call, a video conference, a lot of times people can hear you clicking. Like, you know that if we could see everybody in a video conference and like decode what they're typing based on the sound, so many people at work meetings would get busted. What are you typing, subordinate? I am just taking notes because I'm a faithful, good employee. Then all of a sudden the transcript shows that they're texting their boo. No text in your boo on company time. That's what the boss would say to that guy. I'm sorry, it's so hard for me to say that. I, I never use boo in real life. So technically this kind of attack is called an acoustic side channel attack. And even though it's not entirely new to take something that's considered air gapped and translate it, 95% accuracy through a deep learning model, that's new. That is accurate and it's going to get better soon. So in the paper, they do say that if you want to protect yourself from this kind of attack, the researchers suggest that you use completely randomized passwords. Random clicking is much harder for it to detect than actual words that it's heard before. Potentially adding some fake keystrokes, like a couple, you know, extra letters, couple deletes, just throw it off a little. Alter your typing style. So maybe when it comes to passwords, instead of using both hands, just like hunt and peck or something with one finger. So it just sounds different or just shift to something more biometric, like the scanners of your eyes or the fingerprint scanners, stuff like that. 
So now let's switch sides and think about how these large language models might be used not for defense, but for offense. Nicholas Carlini is this research scientist that works at Google's DeepMind, and he just performed this really interesting cybersecurity experiment, which demonstrated the potential of OpenAI's GPT-4 to bypass some of the other large language models. Which on a side note, probably didn't feel good considering Google had to use a Microsoft product to hack their own product or whatever, but let's not go there. Carlini's research was focused on this tool called the AI Guardian, and the AI AI Guardian is a special model that's meant to fend off and defend data. So it expects adversarial attacks to try to get through its perimeters. So it's like tries to be as locked down as possible, try to react to whatever people are trying to say to it so that it can protect you. It's machine learning model versus machine learning model. And AI Defender is meant to be the defensive side. But in this case, Carlini got the offense to win. And the way that Carlini was able to get past the AI Guardian system was by asking the offensive side to actually craft its own strategic attacks. He said, figure out ways to manipulate AI Guardian. And one of the things he was able to do was he had a photo of somebody that was holding a gun, but when he gave it to the classifier, because of his manipulation, it actually thought the gun was an apple. And overall, the ability for the AI guardian to protect itself fell from 98% all the way down to 8% of the attacks. I mean, even 98% isn't enough to really protect you. But 8% is basically just like doors open, just make sure to move the screen or whatever. And this is particularly concerning because the methodology behind AI guardian involves an embedding that's supposed to be aware of somebody trying to manipulate it to make an image not show up the way it's supposed to. So it was like literally meant, but that brute force attempt from the offense was able to figure out what all the defensive mechanisms were and work around it. But of course, research papers like this help us find out what the weaknesses are. So now more people can think about better ways to build up the next version of AI Defender. So. Fingers crossed. So I've already covered Worm GPT before, but now there's another bad guy model out on the dark web. And unfortunately for us, this is a new upgraded bad guy model. So while Worm GPT was already bad news, Fraud GPT is an upgrade to doing bad things like making malware. But not just that, it's also extra good at doing spear phishing, which is like phishing, but they call it spear phishing because the LLM can actually customize every single message for every single person it attacks. Spear phishing, you know, it's more like direct. It's also better at carding. And carding is a process of finding a credit card number but making sure that it's still active so you can go actually take money from it. And of course, just general computer cracking tools. Finding bugs in software, exploiting them, backdoors, installing like key loggers, all the stuff that compromises your personal information, your computer, and just is a window for bad guys. So be aware that not just Worm GPT exists, that also Fraud GPT is now its upgraded brother, and that this is actually evolving way faster than I wished it was. And the reason why these kind of tools is something we really should be talking about and you should be aware of. Highly motivated bad actors now can write malware without the expertise that it used to require. So stay vigilant out there. Some of those emails and maybe even phone calls, like they could be fake. So I want to tell you about this neuroscientist named Harris Aries. So Aries is coming from the position that the way we understand reality is basically through the neurons in our brain. And that has its own set of characteristic flaws. Because we have to be aware that this brain, the brain that we have in our heads, it did unfortunately come with the capacity to encode misinformation as fact. And here is a piece of misinformation that you need to know. I have 10,000 subscribers. Wrong. I have less than 6,000. So do me a favor and smash that subscribe button.